So what we will call now uh, the Honorable Tom Andrews, a former member of the House of Representatives from Maine, who currently serves as the president uh, to end genocide. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much, members of the commission. Congressman Pitts, uh, welcome, congratulations. Uh, and Congressman Schakowsky, it's wonderful to see you as well. Thank you so much for holding this hearing. It is so important that the Congress hear your voices, that the Congress provide leadership that I believe is lacking uh, from the United States uh, government. It is very important that the frustration and the concerns that you have raised, Mr. Chairman, be raised forcefully, uh, very vocally, uh, here in Washington and across this country and across this world. This is extremely important because the stakes are extremely high. I'm not going to review, you'll see in my testimony, uh, the recitation of the alarming facts that, as you recognize, are bad and getting worse. We haven't seen uh, this level of violence and atrocities uh, since uh, this was declared an, a, a genocide years ago. Um, but I want to uh, identify uh, two um, major factors uh, that are driving uh, these atrocities. Uh, the first, of course, uh, is the impunity uh, of the regime behind this brutality, uh, the regime of Omar al-Bashir, who is the president. Is it, I'm getting some feedback here. Maybe it's just the loudness of my voice. I'll try to. Um, but it's the impunity of uh, the leader of this regime that is, that is behind all of this, who's the president of, of Sudan and also, of, as you noted, um, wanted for genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes by the International Criminal Court. But the second factor is the failure of the United States of America the United Nations, and the international community as a whole to respond adequately to this deepening crisis. The pattern that we are witnessing right now is eerily similar to the a pattern that preceded the, the Darfur genocide more than a decade ago. In short, the steady escalation of the brutal and systematic violence against def defenseless people as the world and those who are in positions to act turn away. We fully realize how full your plate is, how many issues, both foreign and domestic, that you're confronting. We're not going to see a, a joint session of Congress to uh, confront this particular issue. Uh, but as you pointed out, there is a crisis that is deepening that demands uh, action. Um, we have to hold Omar al-Bashir and his regime accountable, but we also have to be held uh, accountable. Bashir's brutality is enabled uh, by our inaction and our silence. Uh, those who are in positions or, uh, to act are simply uh, failing. And as you know, uh, there is a great deal, uh, great deal at stake. May I simply add that the systematic use of food and medicine as weapons of war, the bombing of fields, of cro field crops uh, in, the, in, uh, in, in uh, Sudan, uh, South Kordofan and Blue Nile, uh, is, atro is atrocious. And the bombing of hospitals, the use of medicine and food as weapons of war is just absolutely incredible. And in addition, there are credible allegations that Sudan is arming South Sudanese rebels. Uh, instability and violence on either side of the border, of course, has led to large refugee flows going back and forth. Um, meanwhile, this long and growing list of atrocities, and you expressed your frustration, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, continually are met uh, with uh, tired messages of regret and condemnation that are undermined by counterproductive actions on every level. Despite the uh, spike in violence at the hands of the Bashir regime, for example, the United States government recently welcomed a top advisor to Sudanese President Bashir to Washington to meet with White House and State Department officials and allowed the foreign minister of Sudan uh, to attend the national prayer breakfast in Washington just a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, action speaks louder than words. And all of the words of regret and condemnation are undermined by actions such as these and the actions that you discussed earlier uh, in, the, in the panel. Uh, we, as an organization at United to End Genocide, were very disappointed that the Sudan Peace, Security, and Accountability Act, led by you, Mr. Chairman, uh, in the last Congress and, and championed by members of this commission, uh, failed. 
Uh, we were encouraged uh, by the tens of thousands uh, of our members and supporters who supported that legislation. We were proud of the more than 100 congressional co-sponsors who stood behind that legislation. Um, and we are hopeful that you and this commission and the Congress of the United States can reintroduce uh, this type of comprehensive legislation that hits all the major points that we are making today. There are five major things that I think are needed. One, there needs to be a call for strong U.S. leadership and voices in the U.N. Security Council. Right now, the, the, the talk is clicking on the mandate uh, for peacekeepers, the so-called so UNAMID, the uh, cooperative arrangement between the United Nations and the African Union, um, uh, in their project in Darfur. June 30th, the mandate uh, will run out. Omar al-Bashir is calling for the removal uh, of these peacekeepers. What has been the response? Nearly 800 positions within UNAMID uh, have now been uh, eliminated. Uh, we are talking about the expiration of the mandate and the United Nations and the Security Council are making plans right now uh, to, uh, to exit. An exit strategy is underway uh, for these keep, uh, peacekeepers. We need, Mr. Chairman, an action strategy, not an exit strategy, to confront the crisis that is going on in Sudan uh, right now. Secondly, we have to strengthen the effectiveness of existing sanctions. I outline how in my written testimony. We have to expand the sanctions, not just enforce, but expand the sanctions, and I describe that in my uh, testimony. We need to demand accountability from those who aid and abet Bashir and his reign of terror, whether they be private institutions or governments, including those that welcome him into their country. He traveled to nine different countries last year. Uh, he was in the United Arab Emirates two days ago uh, to attend an arms bazaar, and nothing is said, even when our strong allies and those who are recipients of USAID welcome him to their country, the United States is silent. And finally, we need to have a comprehensive strategy, as outlined in the legislation, to deal with these atrocities in not a piecemeal way, in not a reactive way, but in a very comprehensive way. I urge this committee to speak loudly and clearly to the administration, particularly as the clock is ticking on the United Nations Security Council uh, mandate uh, right now. I would ask you to hold Omar Abashir and his accomplices accountable by raising questions in committee deliberations, on the floor of a house, when foreign uh, policy questions are discussed, when aid questions are discussed. Uh, make this an issue. And finally, uh, may I uh, request that this commission exert the leadership that you did last session in reintroducing this important legislation. I commit to you the efforts of my organization and many thousands of people across this country who will do everything possible to see that it's passed. Thank you so much for your uh, leadership and your willingness to hold this hearing.